Oh, do you, you guys ever go over the Tappan Zee Bridge? It's not the Tappan Zee Bridge. Uh, there is no Tappan Zee Bridge. Okay, but if you did, the Mario Como Bridge? Is nah, it the still Mario the Mario Como. Como Bridge? Or did they yes. cancel the bridge? They actually tore down the Tappan Zee Bridge when they built the Como Bridge. That's yeah. right. Yes. Yes, I've been over it many times. Okay. I'm so sure if, I have. I just, you know. If you keep going on that road and you yeah. start heading out, uh, heading towards Jersey, right? Well, and you, you have to, yes and no. Yeah. Yeah. You, go, <clears throat> you can yeah. pick up the Garden State Parkway like 10 miles past the bridge. Yeah. Yeah. But then after that, if you just go straight, um, you kind of end up, you end up on some highways, right? You have a bunch you, of choices. Well, when you cross the bridge, you're on 287. 287? Yeah. Yeah. Just like Cultra Trail Running Podcast, episode 287. From the belly of the Beast Coast, Glastonbury, Connecticut, this is the Cultra Trail Running Podcast. We talk about all the fun shit that happens on the trails that most normal people don't care about. The language we use is fucking explicit and raw, like the trails we run on. So don't listen with your kids! Culture was brought to you by the Patriots as well. So we are 112% listener supported, and support is good. All right, all right, all right. Well, welcome everybody to the Culture Trail Running Podcast, and a special welcome to all those Jersey people out on Route 287. Uh, my <laughs> name, I'm your host, Art Byram, and I am joined tonight by the amazing Culture Crew. I have Fred Marolo. Um, I'm here. All right. Yay! That's excellent. And Celeste Fong, a ding dong. Good morning. Louder, louder, louder. Come on, like, good morning. Oh, I'm sorry. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. It's still, I'm still sleeping. Okay. So. All right. I love seeing Celeste. That's not true. Way. She, oh. She's like such a ray of sunshine. She is. She looks great. Okay. <laughs> it is. So we have some we'll fun. Let, we'll let you say that. We got some fun shit to talk about tonight, right? It's fun shit yes. that happens on the trails and it's fing explicit. I it think. is. That most it's normal people explicit. don't care about. Yeah, You're but right. people that don't care about trails are stupid. I can say that, right, Fred? You can say it's that. The yeah. fact. Yeah. Sure. Yeah. Yes. It's been scientifically proven. Yeah. Okay. Then market exhibit A. So, um, um, yeah. yeah, we're we're going with that, and we might have a guest jumping in a little bit later. We're going to see how that works out. Um, you know, because you just never know. So, but we do have. Um, so lots of know. good, lots of good things happening. Uh, not the least, we have um, Trap Rock happened this weekend, right? The 50K and 17K. Yep. Hey, uh, 17K and three bears, I believe. Oh my yeah, God. the babies. I missed the baby bear. We are going to talk about that. And then Boston Marathon. Oh, yep. And it was hot Boston. in Boston. We're going we're gonna to save mm-hmm. that. Yeah, we're going to put a pin in that. And then the uh, Umstead uh 100 it happened Yay, not last weekend but the weekend before yes yeah yep. that's right and i mean you know a lot of shit was going on last weekend and we we didn't talk about it last weekend we were waiting for you fred we we put a pin in it and decided to uh wait until you got here so um that's so unfortunate yeah and also <laughs> so there's also been a lot of other crazy shit before we talk about all these major events that people that most normal people don't care about. Let's talk about our own personal lives that most, that like nobody, that nobody cares about. about. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, so Celeste, what yeah. have you been up? What have you been up to? My sister-in-law got married last weekend. Okay. So I went to a wedding, which was epic. And then my daughter and I went to a tattoo convention. So I got a couple of tattoos. Mm-hmm. And then I DNF'd a 50 miler and only did 40 miles. Yeah, I saw that. Um, yeah, but you know what? Whatever, 40 miles. But this was and a then, home, this just before we're going to talk about, we get, we got to, okay, tell me and then, and then we'll go back and rewind all this shit. Cause I got to, we got to unpack some of this. You just like kind of glossed over and like oh, people want. And then I went things. and got a tattoo today too. So. Okay, good. Yeah, it's been so, a week. First of all, uh, let's talk. Yeah. Uh, tattoos you didn't just like get some tattoos you went to a tattoo convention right yep yeah yeah like and i got two and you got two 
I got so an elephant get? for my grandma because mm-hmm. my grandmother uh, collected elephants. So in her memory, I got an elephant with a little heart. It's really cute. And then I got a butterfly because my friend Jackie's afraid of butterflies. So, so you want to terrorize her? Yeah, absolutely. It's, um, that's kind of like ever- symbol- symbolic of, remember um, uh, the movie Dumbo? Yes. Yeah. Now, what did yeah. how did what did Dumbo do to fly? Right. He what did he, a, he he flew with his ears. Right, Fred. Fred. Let the record show that uh, Fred is she, is flapping his ears. Wind is yeah. That's right. Flapping yes. with his ears. That's right. Yeah. He has air air quote ears. Um, but the thing that the thing that Dumbo did was he put a feather in his he he picked up a feather and held on to that and that helped him to fly right. Oh yeah, that's true. I forgot about that. I haven't seen so, Dumbo in thirty years. So the fact that you have a uh, an elephant on one arm and a a butterfly on the other, yep, that's like yin and yin. I want to call it yin and yang, right? But it's you're, not yin you're adding and a yang. G, it's yin. Yeah, and yeah you're and adding yang. a g. Yeah. <sighs> Fuck. So oh. I even fucked up the pronunciation of yin and yang, or yin and yep. yang. Yin and yang. Yeah. <laughs> I, I can take the first G and put it to the second one. So it's yin and yang. Yang. Yeah. Okay. Good, good, good. good. So that's, I, I like that. That's very, uh, that's poetic. Yeah. And then today I got Thor's hammer on my neck on the huh. back of it. Now I never had yeah. a tattoo before. So how much does it, does it hurt or does it not? Real, you don't have a tattoo? You don't, don't have any? Know. Yeah. Okay. Well, it depends on where are you putting it on your body? Okay. And the tattoo artists, how heavy the handed they are mm. will affect it. But yeah, it doesn't tickle. I mean, you're getting stabbed a million times. So yeah. But, but don't you the one on my to... spine, like that it hurt. That like, one. Could they do like a has anybody ever done a spinal tap by accident and like inked up somebody's spinal fluid? I, I don't I don't think the needles are that deep. They're not long enough for that. I mean, I've had epidurals because I've had three kids, so yeah. I've had a needle in my spine, but huh. yeah, that hurt too. Fred, Fred, what do you think? Have you ever had to defend any tattoo artists for uh, putting ink into spinal taps? I have not, but spinal uh, when you said, has anybody ever done that? I was going to say somebody's effed up pretty much everything and it turned true. into a lawsuit. Um, I, I did actually represent a woman who did tattoo removal and mm. she did a tattoo removal. Some, some young woman had tattooed her boyfriend's name on her left boob and. Okay. Never uh, do that. Yeah. Don't, don't do that. People. If you're, you know, you have to like, don't, if you're going to tattoo that. someone's name, put it in a place that you're not going to see it because you the right up with him. She broke up with him. She had a new boyfriend. She went to the tattoo removal place and it burned her skin because that's very tender skin. So, so she hmm. said, yeah. And, yeah. And tattoo removal is from what I've heard, very, very, very painful. But so. well, basically I think they were just burning it all off. I mean, it was really yeah, pretty much it seemed pretty primitive to me. That's, that's what I got from. Yeah. Are there like licensed yeah. um, tattoo removals, removists? I think that this artist was like a cosmetologist and that was uh-huh. one of the things she did. I, I can just picture like a tattoo removal artist. Like, do they like show pictures of their work? Like they, they hang up these empty sketch boards and say, <laughs> yeah. well, you can have this one or this one. <laughs> here's, before the before, and after. Or, here's the after. <laughs> yeah. It's like selling the picture. What's the painting of? Oh, it's a picture of a cow eating grass. And the cow ate the grass and ran, <laughs> walked away. Yeah, and it's a white piece of paper. I mean, that's like, about my artistic skills, like a white piece of paper, or a, it's yeah. a polar bear in a in a blizzard. You know, I mean, yeah. wow, tattoo. I, I can't imagine getting a boyfriend's name tattooed. Like yeah, I've been really. married forever, and I still wouldn't get his name tattooed on me. So if you're married, you're not going to get your boyfriend's t- name tattooed. That's pretty smart, actually. <laughs> no, I don't. Yes. I, that's commendable. <laughs> you thought this thing out, which is- These good. are words to live by, people. I really right. did. Right. I, so Chris put that would in. not be These happy. Be tips, <laughs> tips for the wise there. So we're recommending <laughs> yeah. do not get your boyfriend's name tatted on you. I am going to get my kids' or... names tattooed, but like they're Chinese names, so it'll be the Chinese characters. Uh-huh. 
Okay. I'm getting that done. But. And you can't get rid of them anyway, so you might as well just own them, right? I, I tried. I kids. tried. I can't. They left them at the bus station. I did everything, but yeah, kids are like tattoos. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, they're permanent. That's right. Yeah. <laughs> and yeah. expensive and yeah. painful. So yeah. there you go. Yeah. Just like tattoos. But yeah. people like to show them to everybody too. Yeah, well, it's true. Wow. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. So that's that's exciting. And then you got yeah. Thor's hammer. So I know you talked about it a little bit last week, but uh, tell us again about that. You know, I, I like it's a it's a good story. So one of my best friends is um, battling breast cancer, and she's a survivor. But mm-hmm. obviously, it's like a lifelong. Um, she's going to have to be on drugs, all this stuff. But anyway. So her and I were going to go get Thor's hammers tattooed on us. But because of some blood infections and whatnot, she is not allowed to get tattooed. Mm -hmm. So I said, well, then I'll get it for you. And she came with me today and I let her pick out where and she actually drew it and all of it. Um, So I got that for her. So that so when she was battling, she. Like uh, Immigrant Song is her favorite song, which is from Second. Ragnarok. Yeah. But did you see Ragnarok, Thor? Uh, yes. Yeah. I'm going to say. Yeah. So when he's fighting at one point, they play Immigrant Song and he comes down with his lightning and, you know, the whole land of the ice and snow. It is. <laughs> yes. Which is an amazing song. It's on my playlist. But anyway, so um, me and my friends Lena got dressed up. I dressed up as Loki. And she dressed up as Valkyrie and we showed up with Thor's hammer. Um, you know, so it was this theme going through her whole treatment. So now I have Thor's hammer tattooed on my neck to fight for her for the rest of her life. Very good. Nice. Yeah. That's great. Yeah. That's it's good. a pretty good yeah. weapon, too. It is. I, I mean, it really is. I was going to yeah. get Stormbreaker, but because she couldn't get tattooed, I ended up just getting... And you think about like, so it's also helpful. I mean, you know, it's handy to have that hammer around. I mean, like if you ever have I to mean, like- I mean, if you're worthy. If, if right? you're changing if you're not the worthy. tire- and you the tire you can't even lift it, right? If, if the tire right. is stuck to the rim after you pull off the lug nuts and you need, you know, you just got that hammer. You can just knock that sucker off, you know, right off the, <laughs> you know. Okay, can you not give anyone ideas? Cause they're gonna like take my head now and use my hammer on my neck and start like slamming me it's into good. things. Or the circus comes to town and you need to drive a tent pole, you know, or a stake. <laughs> I mean, right. you got the hammer. I was thinking of like just hanging a picture or something, you know, you, you <laughs> have lots of use. Can you imagine That's right. using like the most powerful hammer ever just to like hit a nail? That's right. I mean, that would actually be a pretty good um, little uh, Instagram thing there. Like Thor, <laughs> Thor's new apartment. <laughs> yeah. I was in, oh, I'm just going to like hang up a couple of pictures. And the whole building just goes down. That's awesome. Yeah, that's pretty cool. Uh, very good. Um, so, uh, and Fred, how are you doing? I'm doing all right. Yeah. Um, yeah. Um, you saw uh, Jimmy Mack the other day. Are you had, allowed to talk about that? I had coffee that? with Jimmy Mack and lovely Cheshire yesterday. And yeah, uh, yeah it was great to see him. Yeah. Well, you warmed yeah. him up for me. I did. I did. So. And he invited me on a, uh, a run or on the perimeter trail in uh, Sleeping Giant and said no one would be left behind. And I was like, no. No, I, yeah. I think you could leave me behind. I, I, I think we need to dive deep into that. So I was thinking <laughs> about this. So like, yeah, I showed up and it was like, uh, it was like, you know, like who was there? Uh, Jacques was there. Jimmy was oh. there. Uh, Steph, uh, not Stefan. Um, uh, Mark Kelly. Mark Kelly was there. Uh, Tyler was there. Uh, oh Tom. Um. Was the, the destroyer there? Yeah, Tom. Tom. Yeah, yeah Tom. I thought I didn't want to repeat myself. I thought I already said that, but maybe no. I didn't. Um, yeah, Tom, the destroyer, starred. I was there, and um, and 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 uh, energy was there for a little bit. Oh, um, okay. So like, so the so, fast people, and, oh, and fast then I'm people. there, and I'm like, oh, good. I'm glad that Jimmy made it. Like nobody gets left behind. Blah 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 blah. So, um, I showed up and. Um, I don't know. It just, 
it, it so I in in light of that, like, and I'll get into just some of the details, just because it was pretty funny in my mind. Um, like, I, I I want to know like three if everybody could give like either three ways that you know that you're in great shape, or three signs that you are in deep shit. <laughs> like like when you know you are fucked up when you're when you're when you're really fucked up and that you're uh not in good shape like give me three signs of uh you know three indicators that maybe you're not in the best shape of your life anybody yeah. have any uh trying to keep up with them isn't really a fair comparison though yeah none of that's true like, i'm picturing art coming to like the first trail junction and jacques comes up behind him like i i did uh, one lap i'm i'm just coming up you know, but I did not, i'm I doing did easy <laughs> yeah <laughs> okay I, like i think them running up sleeping giant up the base they could do that faster than me running downhill on a road on a mm. skateboard down the carriage <laughs> trail okay right all right when you yeah. wish I had a skateboard, that's a good one. Fred, you yeah. got any? Mm, not that's coming to mind right now. Because I, as I was running with these guys, I was like, fuck, like, you know, how do I love thee? Let me count the ways. And like, <laughs> it was like, how am I fuck? You know, how is my training not going well right now? Let me count the ways. So I started thinking of it and I came up with a couple. Um, I've uh, So the sun has been out, the, the rain has been falling and then the rain stopped dried up and what happens the grass grows so i got out there with my electric mower and i mowed uh i you know we have this lawn mowers of strava right so i put that in as a uh you know as as a run you know or as an activity mowing the lawn and um it put it down as a tempo run so <laughs> <laughs> That's a bad sign, I think. Yeah. yeah, that's like bad. Like when it thought like I was maxing out by pushing <laughs> the lawnmower and I have a flat lawn. I only did the little tiny part. Like it took me like 20 minutes and it thought I was maxing out. It thought it was like a threshold run. Um, so that's one That's way, like when you know. Garmin's like, you're unproductive. And you're like, bitch, I just did a marathon. What do I you know. mean? Yeah. So the second thing is, is that um, I did... So we did this massive run yesterday around Sleeping Giant and you couldn't have found a flatter run in sli around Sleeping Giant than what we did. Now, granted, it, it had probably, I don't know, a, a, maybe it had a, a thousand feet of climb or something like that, 800 feet. But for Sleeping Giant, that's like nothing. Flat. OK, right. And these guys were taking it easy. Like there was no they weren't running hard. I mean, they were running a little bit, but it was like a fucking jog. Okay. <laughs> and um, I found out, so, you know, I was dragging behind and, and it was really nice because somebody hung back with me the whole time. You know, they kind of had like, um, I don't know, they drew straws or something. <laughs> <laughs> Who started at the babysit? And they kind of hung back. And then, um, then all of a sudden at about like three miles in or so, I started to cramp up. <laughs> so I had like, now these are cramps that you usually have at like you know maybe during a 50k like the last like five miles if it's like 95 degrees out but it was like it was like a, a fucking blistering 67 or something of course i'm sweating like a fucking you know oh my god i'm i'm sweating like a wildebeest and but i'm like dehydrated i'm also the only one carrying butter so um, so I started cramping up on a five mile run to the point where it was like, fuck, I like, and not just like little ones like, oh, ow, that hurt. It was like, fuck. I thought like for a second, my legs were going to lock up like the ones that go from your ankles to your crotch. So that happened. So, and then, so I finished this 5.39 mile run or whatever it was. And then I stopped my watch and save the workout and it tells me that i need 40 hours of recovery time <laughs> so i'm like oh my god what is wrong with me so carmen is vicious oh, fuck did, no did it's you find truthful. yourself making excuses like oh i don't ordinarily have these oh. cramps oh my like god that. i was like well 
no, I kind of threw myself under the bus. I was like, oh my God, I'm just like a fat fuck. <laughs> and like, this is the heaviest Wait, I've been. I would been. like to point out that some of those guys are young enough to be like our oh, kids. I know, okay? but they, that would be, that would count if we were racing. <laughs> if we were racing still... or running, they were, it was like, a, it was like a, between, it wasn't a jog, but it was like a, fro, a frolic, like, you know, like. I don't know. Just like, yeah, da, 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 you know, oh, so, and the only thing that saved me was I had a, I had a pair of carbon plated trail shoes on me. <laughs> I was running in a pair of a brand new out of the box focus. Otherwise I would have been <laughs> fucked. <laughs> and I think I might've got a distress fracture across the top of my foot. Too, because I'm limping today and I can't oh, run. Man. So <laughs> It was pretty fucking bad on all accounts. So, I mean, in fairness, I, funny. I did, I ran nine miles the night before and I was, I was dehydrated. I really didn't drink going into it. It was the end of the day, blah, blah, blah. But it was fucking, it was pretty pathetic, but I, I'm not feeling bad about myself, but I was just kind of, I got a good chuckle out of it. And I mean, sometimes was, you have to laugh at yourself. Oh God. Yeah. Yeah. And yeah. and I was a little embarrassed. So, but he fucking asked for it. Really. He said like anybody can go and that's what he I, got. I saw that at first and I'm like, Oh, maybe I'll go. And then I'm looking at who's going and I'm like, yeah, may, maybe, maybe I won't go. <laughs> yeah. I, well, if you want to go in the future, Celeste, we should make two groups. We'll have like the, yeah, first, we'll go. We'll be like the fun group. Yes. Yeah. Well, I'm sure they were having fun too, but you know, they're just well, fast, yeah, but fun. fast fun. Yeah. Fast fashion. We'll be like the back of the pack party. Yeah. There you go. Yeah. So yeah. it was, it was pretty, um, it, it was, it was fun though. I have to say it was, it was good to see, uh, see all those guys um, and had a good chance to, uh, you know, to, to kind of hang out some, so. That'd be good training too, because my training for the cut has been shit, non-existent. Well, hold it. You did just a second though. Let's let's okay. We gotta. So we. I'm sorry. We started to unpack your things, but then we got. I got sidetracked with my own stuff. <laughs> my <art thing>. How <laughs> unusual. <laughs> um, That's never happened, never happened before. Yeah, yeah. Let's move away from the important stuff and go back to where to your story here. <laughs> um, <laughs> Tell us about, so tell us about this 40 mile, this 40 mile run. Like, okay. For the record, I haven't run 40 miles since, um, since, uh, the, what was it? That, that, um, oh my gosh, the run in Massachusetts, um, that I did, uh, stone cat. Oh, okay. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Since stone cat. And that was, that was 10 miles more or 14 miles more, but <laughs> it was yeah. counting. I, so I think I told you guys that asshole Craig challenged me to do a 50 miler every month. Right. Oh, okay. So, yeah. So I was going to do it because I have Ragnar next week and it's my daughter's birthday. Like, mm -hmm. so this weekend is my daughter's birthday. Next weekend is Ragnar and Ragnar. I'm doing ultra team, but that's only 30 miles. So it's not really, you know what I mean? So I'm like, Oh, I got to do it this weekend but I hadn't slept in four days because of the wedding and just, I never sleep. Um, and you know, sick dog, blah, 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 whatever. So I'm like, okay, I'm going to do my 50 miler. So I go out and, um, the first 50 K was amazing. Like everything mm -hmm. went right. I walked like three and a half miles. Cause my friend showed up with her dog and dogs are more important. But like, it was just like the perfect run. And then I'm like, everybody left. So I'm like, I'm going to run to McDonald's and get some fuel. And that did not go well. I went I did, inside. It, it, no. I, I did see that. So you were running all over Weathersfield. Yeah. And then I, I looked at your Strava and I was like, 40 miles. I was like, oh, shit. Look at that. That's oh. something. And then I was like, oh, look at this. She went out to, must have gone to the ferry stop. And I was like, oh, but she's not by the ferry. And then, oh, she well, went up to Silas Dean. Oh, did she go for Chinese food? Maybe she. Oh, that sounds good. I thought you went to Chinese food. So I, all of a sudden, I'm like, I'm zooming in on your, uh, <laughs> on your Strava. And then I'm like, okay, what is that building? So I had to change the background and get the aerial view and <laughs> zoom in. And I I'm just like, wanted oh, a burger. A drive yeah. Yeah. So 
Um, the farm is completely flooded. Okay. So we didn't go on the farm. So it was all roads, which is stupid. But I went to McDonald's. It took forever. And by the time I left, I was shivering uncontrollably. Hmm. And I couldn't get my body temp to regulate. Like, hmm. I started sweating. So I take off my jacket. And then I was like shivering. So I put it on. And it was just, it wasn't feeling right. And then it started raining. And I'm like, fuck this. <laughs> like, I'm good. You know. So I went oh home. Oh, my gosh. Sometimes yeah. you got to do that. You got to you gotta take your Big Mac and take it back home. I, and honestly, you know, like 40 miles as a training run isn't horrible. Um, uh-huh. It's, it's it is not. what it is. What are you going to do? 40 miles. You know, if you consider that with like, you know, you've had some like it's it's you've had a lot on your plate lately, right? Yeah. Like, oh, yeah. I've, you know. I've had a lot going on. Yeah. And my like I said, my training has not been as consistent as it normally is. Like every time I'm like, OK, I'm on, you know, I think I've told you guys like my husband's in a boot. My son's got a broken arm. My dog broke his face. Um, and just other stuff going on with like Easter and having to move it. And my sister-in-law get married. I have a family member who's like, just been like one after another, after another of things that are like more important. Yeah. So it is what it is. What are you going to do? Jeez. Yeah. Okay. Well, it's, um, you know, good for you for getting 40 miles in, especially when it's like, like when it's not a, a, a given route, it's not like doing 20 miles out and then coming back right oh no we were just i was just fucking around because it was like all right i'm out here um and i didn't go to bed till after one and i was up at three so like i didn't mm. get out there till like 4 30 and then which is late for me so i was trying to stay close because i knew ashley and craig were coming and danny was co- so you know i was just kind of fucking around and zigzagging and avoiding flooding yeah yeah going around and- the cove Weather yes. or old so weather you could get through the bike path. Yeah. That is clear. Mm-hmm. Um, the barn, the water's all the way up to the barn at the cove. Yeah. So you can't get through there, but you can get through the bike path. Okay. Um yeah. Wow. Okay. Well, yeah. that's you know what? That's that's impressive. Good for you for uh knocking out 40 miles, right? Yeah. Well, Gotta feel good about we that. Did it. Yeah. It was a it was a good day too. Like I said, I felt really good until I didn't. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. That's that's fair. Sometimes uh, sometimes it's like that, right? So yeah. Um. Nope. All right. So um, you guys want to talk about trap rock a little bit? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. I don't know. Did you guys have a chance to pay attention to any of that? Or I know you were kind of traveling and doing your own things a little bit you know um but it was it was um you know trap rock for those who don't know um is a uh race it's probably the first big one of the first big trail races in connecticut uh in the season every year right besides like it's the kind real, of the kickoff trail season besides the real king of pain or the hop and hodges obviously <laughs> you right. know which goes without saying and it's not nearly as hard as the hop and hodges which is uh the ra- uh, 50 mile of uh, 50k of rail trail um this is uh trap rock so it's it's three loops of this course um and it's uh it's i'd say it's it's a it's a challenging course you know mentally i think just the fact that you have three 11 mile loops and uh, you start by just going up a baller of a hill. You know, you just climb. Oh, that hill is stupid. Oh, it is. It's great. I mean, the first time it's kind of fun because it's like, you know, you're just going up this thing. But then, like, the second time it's like, oof. And then by the third time, you're like, just fuck this hill. I'm not going to have to go up this again, you know. Um, That's a lie. The first time up that hill sucks. It, it does. Okay. <laughs> Maybe it does. And it's and then it drops good. you down, you know, it, it instantly drops you back down and then back up something even punchier. So um, yeah. it, it definitely it is a pretty its, course though. It is. It is. Was the, I bet the power lines was flooded at the bottom of the power lines. Yeah. I didn't, I didn't get out on that part. I just um, 
showed up to, um, I didn't race it, but I just showed up and uh, ran from uh, Wintonbury back to the, to the start finish. Okay. Back to Wintonbury again. So I got to run with uh, Jacques. Uh, we kind of got some miles in together. And uh, the um, DNF is like huge. Yeah, I didn't. Um, Did you look at the results? Uh, yeah, actually. Wow. Yeah, I guess there's. Huh. Yeah, there's quite a few of uh, 36 DNFs and 89 finishers. So that's almost that's... like. Like, what do we call that? A third? <laughs> it's more <laughs> than a third, right? Yeah, that's crazy. It's a bunch. And I, am I reading this correctly that there was a course record set for the 50k? Yes, thank you. Yes, there was. Um, so let's let's set the stage here. So um, again, it's three loops, and then uh, there's the aid station at the start finish, one at uh, uh, Wintonbury Road, and I don't know if there was another one out there this year or not, but um, maybe at the one of the spots. I don't know. But it was, um, you know, it's nice because you get to watch the race unfold, right? So um, they had a lot of a uh, lot of really good runners there. Um, so uh, let's see, for the men, um, in seventh place we had John Snow. Um, so it didn't feel like winter was coming <laughs> there. He's doing the cut, right? Um, see, now you're embarrassing me because I should Sorry. know these, I should know this shit. We were um, talking about the cut today and I was looking who was doing it and he was on it. Okay. Then you Cause someone, your there's Jon Snow and then somebody Stark and I'm like, shut up. <laughs> Snow and Stark, really? Yeah. Yeah. Um, and then, uh, Lee Davis was sixth place, um, which was cool. He was in his usual smiling self out there, um, he got it done. Uh, Justin Newman uh, from New Haven, he was there, uh, got it done. And uh, Brian Rusecki was fourth. Uh, Stephen Young was third. And then the battle for first and second was fucking epic um, because uh, these two guys were just um, going out at, uh, out at record pace. And um, so it was between uh, James Boating and uh, Ben Quattronami. Um, and uh, it was just, it was epic to, I mean, just watching these guys tear through the course. Um, James was out front for quite a bit. Um, probably, I think the first three guys were, for a while there, it was, um, it looked to be just like using round figures because at, at um, the places I, you know, especially at the um, Wintonbury Road, you got to see him go out and come back. So, right. you know, you would see him at whatever that was at mile three and then uh, mile eight, I think, something like about that. Eight. Yeah. Makes three sense. And it's eight. about that. Yeah. And so they were spaced out at about five minutes for a long, you know, for, for a while. Um, and then you know, I, I got back to the uh, start finish and then uh, as they were coming in for uh, they would finish two loops and they were going out for their third and uh, James was there. Uh, now James won Nitbuck, you guys will remember. And we had him on the yes. show and talked just a very interesting, uh, you know, great guy to talk to and, and, you know, talked about yoga and about dealing with pain and, and all that. And, um, uh, he came through in the lead uh, to the start finish after two loops and then um, headed out. And then soon after, in less than five minutes, uh, Ben came up uh, to the aid station. And um, I think at that point, I think James looked like he was like he was feeling it. You know, he was he was um, kind of feeling it. But uh, Ben looked strong. So we knew as they took off that it was going to be a, um, you know, that it was going to be a battle there. So, um, so they, they took off and um, uh, Ben ended up catching them on the last loop and, um, you know, and, and James and, and ended up setting a, a course record, uh, which the old course record was uh, 436, 
I believe. Um, I should bring that up here. Yeah, that it was 436, yeah. 43659. Thank you. Yeah. Um, in 21. Yes. Yep. Daniel Grip had it. Yeah. And then Ben did it in 43319 this year. Yes. Yeah. So um I wonder and the course changes a little bit year to year too. I don't know. I, I don't know. I, I had discussions with people and it was like I was thinking of something different. <laughs> like I just remembered it very the course very different. Like at Wintonbury Road, I thought that not too long ago that you would have to go, there's like this nasty switchback that brings you down to that aid station on your way out. Mm-hmm. And that you used to have to go right back up that after you, you know, once you came back through. So there was two way traffic on there. Um, this I don't ever remember that, it, but it, yeah, they took know. it, they took it back to um, the lower course or the lower trail instead of bringing you up on the blue, um, yeah. which I would think that's got to be faster, but I think there's enough other stuff that has changed uh, too, but I could be wrong. Well, because they kind had of the, that stupid, um, the big Brian's hill. Revenge. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. yeah, that was Brian Rocker Priori that came up with um, that little bit of extrovert there. Yeah, that was just cruel. But when he did that, punishment. I didn't think that he sent, I thought when he first did that, that you still had to go back up that switchback. I don't think he's, I don't remember him switching it to the lower course coming out of um, Wintonbury, but I don't, I, I don't remember. These are, these are details that like most normal people don't care about, but. I, I do. So I'm going to, I'll, I'll fight. I'll figure that out. Maybe I'll even ask somebody who fucking knows. <laughs> um, but at any rate, it was just, this race is always great to see um, because like lots of, you know, lots of uh, good people were there. I was hanging out with a lot of the trail mixers at that aid station. Um, Michael Opresti got to talk to him for a while and um, you know, a, a bunch of other people. And um, then back at the start line, saw everybody i saw hundo joe i saw alex brown was there tony um was there just like every you know every everybody was there so uh jay jay mitchell a whole bunch of people so um and uh i don't know it's like a gathering you know so i was gonna party yeah i was gonna go there and do um interviews and stuff but i just like for some reason i just like felt like just like hanging out with everybody. I didn't feel like putting, bringing out the microphone, you know? So well, yeah, but sometimes it's more about that, you know? Yeah. It hanging is. out in it the is. community. That's a yep. great, it's like a big party. I like to volunteer there. Yeah. I usually do, but this year, like I said, I had the thing with my daughter. So yeah. Yeah. So, um, and then, um, for the females, um, we had, uh, let's see, Cassandra uh, Spittler from uh, Newport. She got uh, first. And then we had, um, in second, we had uh, Madeline Wolf and, uh, from Grantham, New Hampshire. So that's, uh, that's pretty cool in a 658. So that's, that's great. And then... Um, our favorite action verb came in third, uh, Kelsey Yang. <laughs> She's so, the best. Yeah. So she was uh, bubbly there and uh, got it done. So congratulations to, um, you know, uh, to them and to everybody else who uh, ran it. Just like um, Cheryl Wheeler, you know, I think we talked to her last year, um, you know, 61 years old. Got yes. fourth place. Yes, yes, right? yes. With us. Uh, we talked to her after. Was it, was it Netbuck? Netbuck, or? Netbuck, the same episode that had James on. So yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, so yeah, just really good, uh, really you know, really good um, efforts out there. You know, um, Emma Dixon. Uh, you know, just a, a bunch of people out there. So, um, and uh, yeah. I don't know. Yeah, it was just it was overall it was just a really good time. You know. Um, and then there's also a 17K. So the 17K is um, like the 50K, except it's less Ks. Yeah, one it's, loop instead of three. Thank you. Yes, one loop instead of three. 
Um, and uh, in that, uh, Max uh, Arno from Bloomfield won uh, in 128, um, which is pretty good, right? <clears throat> um, it was also, it was a, it was a pretty, it, it was a pretty excellent day to run, I think. Yeah. yeah, nice and nice and chilly, and you know it was like kind of cold, but not cold and stuff like that. So, um, and then uh, let's see, third we had. Uh, 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 now I'm gonna fuck up the name here. Uh, Tremern uh, Holtz Hots. Fuck, I really fucked that up. Who could guess that I would ever do such a thing, right? <laughs> you fuck up someone's name? Yeah. So that's uh, from Hartford. Yeah. Patreon. Good. Art. That's that's good enough to be Patreon. Uh, it is. Yeah. It is. That's... Yeah. Yeah. Tra Tra See, I would I would read okay. his name if I was going to Patreon his name. I'd say he was a uh, tree mean or tree mean, like he's fucking mean to trees <laughs> <Huh>? <laughs> or something. But I don't know. Um, did that, but then. Something really impress, super impressive um, was uh, Marie uh, Armisen Goller, who we had uh, had her on as well. Yep. I think um, you know, and, and talked to her for a while. And reports have it that she led the pack up the hill uh, the first time. So uh, that she led in running the seventeen k. That she um, took the pack out up the hill. So. Um, yeah, I believe that. I was going to say, I wouldn't be surprised. Yeah, yeah. And, and then, then after um, she finished the race, she probably went and, and like uh, worked at a nuclear power plant or something. Probably. probably. Yeah. She, that, that's, you know, that's definitely a possibility. So, yeah, she, she did go nuclear. On there. She <laughs> yeah. did go nuclear on him there. Um, <laughs> and Scott Livingston had a good run too. He, um, he got uh, eighth place overall. So in a 143, so yeah, good. very good there. Um, yep. Let's see. Uh, so second place um, female was uh, Alexandra Finn Atkins um, from Cornwall on Hudson, New York. Or Corn Cornwall on the Hudson, isn't it? On the Hudson, Fred? I wouldn't know. Uh, I don't know. You don't know. Fuck. Is it Cornwall I, on the Hudson? I, I don't recall. I refuse to answer. Sorry, that. I don't recall it. This sounds time. like it I, should be in Britain anyway. I don't recall. Yes, Cornwall well, on the Avon. Yeah, yeah. Um, and uh, and then Debbie Livingston got third. So, um, I saw Debbie run through uh, through Wittenbury, and she said, "Oh my God, I forgot! Like when you're running a 17, you have to really move. You can't just like go at 50k <laughs> pace." <laughs> yeah. so, almost over before it starts I, I thought that was yeah. a great comment because like some of these like how do you race you know for an ultra runner racing 11 miles is it it's a different thing right it's night and day no walk yeah. i ran a 5k this morning and i wanted to die like i'm like why what is the point of this this is stupid yeah i don't know it's i mean it's still though like when when you have like a um you know, a threshold uh, rate and the, you know, the, the training characteristics that I have, like 11 miles is like a fucking ultra for most people <laughs> right now. So I, you know, I might need to like take a sleep break in the middle of that. Who knows? Um, these no, days. I support that. I can't you believe got I breakfast. Ran, I mean, come on. I can't believe I ran hop and Hodges like two weeks ago and now I'm like fucking like i mean and i fucking rocked that i gotta say but you know that i like i'm just complete dog shit and can't run five miles <laughs> yeah, it's really funny to me how sometimes you could go out and like a 5k and you're like i can't even do this i'm dying right oh. but the next day you run 50 miles and you're like i feel great like it's so yeah it, to me it's like when you pick like if you go out and you say oh, i'm gonna do 10 miles at mile nine you're dumb right? But yeah. if you go out with the idea, I'm going to run a marathon. Yes. You're good at mile nine, yeah. right? It's so psychological. Yeah. I think that was the problem is that Jimmy said, oh, we'll wait for anyone. And I said, well, will you bitch? <laughs> Let's see. <laughs> Challenge accepted. That's right. Let's see what you got. And he said, this ain't hard. 
this is this is an easy course and i was like oh yeah we'll see about that shit (laughs) i'll prove you wrong i'll find some fucking drama (laughs) we can do this i'm I'm not not gonna drink for three days just to make your life difficult that's right i hope you got (laughs) do you got air support (laughs) where's your helicopter How long are you willing to wait? You guys didn't bring headlamps, did you? No, you didn't. <laughs> oh my God. It could have I it I have to say that it did occur to me. Like, should I have brought a headlamp? You know? <laughs> Starting at six. I think that only gave us like two hours of daylight or something. I would have need at least like oh. I'd probably need a charger for my headlight to finish that. <laughs> wow. Um, so I don't know. So yeah, congratulations to everybody who did uh, Trap Rock and um, uh, Karen Prado, or Karen Plato, excuse me, um, and Ron Lacondro, who uh, put on the uh, race air with the mixers. You know, great job. Yep. Um, you know, good to see Karen out front there and, uh, you know, getting it done. So um, very good. Lots, lots of fun. So um, I don't know. I might, I might, who knows? I might try running that next year. <laughs> it seems unimaginable. <laughs> I always say I'm going to, but I'm just never going to. It's not a, I mean, they have an hour early start you can take too. Because, oh yeah. I would need that. But I'm yeah. just saying like, I, sometimes like races like that, I just want to mm-hmm. volunteer so I can have fun. It is fun. You know, the, volunteering there is fun i mean i gotta say it is so but if you take the early start you might make it to the top of the first hill before the fast guys for the regular guys start maybe (laughs) no promises (laughs) maybe maybe you could just you know what i think probably the best thing for me to do is to show up at midnight and like do an extra lap ah there you go that's a good idea. Yeah. yeah. And then I'm like, oh, sorry, am I in your way? <laughs> Maybe yeah. I do oh. a lap first. Yeah. And then fucking lap three won't feel so bad. Right? I, I bet right. that yes, would make it will. that no, no, that no, would make feel lap, pretty bad, but it would make lap three feel easy because you're gonna be like, well, at least it's not lap four. <laughs> Cause you, okay. you know. Yeah. If you say so. Sure. <sighs> Last time I did that course, I hiked it and I was listening to Jaws. Oh. Like an audiobook. I don't know why I just thought of that, but oh. Hey, we we gotta do a public a PSA here too. Um, so there were also um there were also bears on the course. <gasps> they were so cute. Yeah, but they weren't cute. We're not gonna talk about them being cute. Um we, we got to like get some sense. Are you going to tell me I can't pet the bears? Don't pet the bears. God. What yeah. The... You guys yeah, are the worst. It, it's, these bears are like, people were like, I t- like not, I'm not saying that there were like group selfies with the bears, but there might've been like the and bear was kind of. They have like poured honey on their hands and held them onto the bears, that kind of thing. Yeah. I would have done it. <laughs> I, I think the, the bear was doing like the, uh, you know, what do you call it? Where you go, where you make the, Oh, the, the fish, puck, uh, the fish face, right? Yeah. The kissy face, kissy like, face. Um, yeah. They're doing that and doing like all the, you know, the big open mouth thing. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and, and it was, there were the bear. Okay. So there was a mama bear and cubs and the cubs, the she was sending the cubs up the tree a lot. And like, just like as a public service announcement, like, don't, what the fuck are you thinking? Like, if you're, I mean, like, if you want to go, like, if you see a bear, you should try to get, like, try to get around it and not fuck with it. And I'm sure that that's what most people did. But there were also people there who were going after the bear to get pictures. Like, you know. I and, mean, and you've got to be smart. Yeah. Yeah. And, and okay. So nobody was seriously killed, but, um, like you got to realize like you're fucking taking your life in your hands. Now bears don't normally attack people, but 
it's not unheard of. I know for a fact, um, uh, cause I heard it from a friend who listened to it on a podcast. No, I, I heard <laughs> there was a scout master in New Jersey who got pulled into a cave by a bear and the bear started to eat him. Okay. And then the scouts had to go and cause a distraction and got help and, um, were able to have him rescued, but, um, bears do, you know, everybody says, Oh, they're not, they're not grizzly bears. They're not going to get you. And you're probably right, but you're not always right. Um, they fuck uh, statistically people Statistically speaking, they're not yeah. going to attack you. Yeah. But if you instigate, yeah, they are wild animals. Yeah. yeah. They will. If you, if you get between them and their, their cubs. Yeah. Yeah. Mama and, bears are not happy. And no. when mom is sending bears up the, you know, when she's sending the cubs up the tree, that's like, you know, Betsy, Betsy locked the door, you know, like, yeah. you know, I'm, I'm getting ready to kick some ass, you know, it's clobbering time. That's, that's kind of what it is like, per, you know, battle stations. So I don't know. It's mixed like, in about like five superhero metaphors or something. Is that it? Yeah. I, I, so with yeah. great trail running comes great responsibility. And, <laughs> you know, and if you want to change the course of mighty rivers or bend steel in your bare hands, just, you know, you, you can't, it's, yeah, you can't do this. You yeah. like, really don't fuck with bears. Okay. Like, cause it's really like, you look at them in the pictures and they're adorable, right? I would pet one. I know. But, but I'm no. stupid. I'm going to have to edit this shit out. <laughs> well, he, well here's the thing put it this way i mean i would pet one but if you try and get to a bear right mm -hmm. and that bear attacks you and you're out in the woods yeah now people that have to come rescue you mm -hmm. like that's a dangerous thing to have to like get these rescue workers out into the woods to get you so like think of other people i guess or worse think of the bears what if you hurt the bear well, no, you're or, giving or you, the bear, or the bear has to get shot or something. Yes, if the, the bear, well, that's it. Yeah. The bear's going to get killed because yeah. you're an idiot. Yes. Yeah, and and then those baby bears that are so cute are going to they fucking. They're not going to have a mommy. So if you want to take a little bear's fucking, if you want to take a little bear's mother, and that's the kind of asshole you are, then go ahead. Seriously, <laughs> and I'm like a queen asshole. And when I saw that baby deer. I know it was a deer, not a bear. But when I saw that baby deer just hanging out, would have let me pet it for real. I didn't. The bear. Because I was afraid the mommy bear, deer, it was a deer. The mommy deer would then not take care of the baby. Like, and the mm -hmm. animals are more important than you people. Like, no offense, yeah. but. Furry friends first. Thank you. F3. F3. Furry <laughs> family first. That's right. So. Yeah. So like, don't mess with bears. Okay. Really? Like if you see one, um, if you see one, if you see something, say something. No, <laughs> just, just, yeah. Like make, <laughs> what? make a great noise, scare story. the bear away. If it doesn't run, there's a reason. And then that means that's the, the clue yeah, that, that you, that you need fuck to pay it. the fuck attention. Yes. So funny story. One time me and Selena were out on Mattituck trail and all of a sudden she grabs me and she yanks me down like so she's squatting in this tiny little ball and she's like there's a bear there's a bear and she's like whispering and i'm like selena when you see a bear you're supposed to get loud and big and she's like no it'll see us it was the funniest thing ever i had to convince her to get like big and yell and the bear's just like you guys are idiots and ran away hi ellie there you oh, go oh, oh. welcome ellie Pally. sorry that i'm so late uh you know I know. Uh, it's Olympic called fashionable. Olympic ceremonies and trials. I'm fashionably late. Yes. Got the tank, got the farmer's tent. Oh, you guys can't really see it that well. Oh, yeah. but Look at no, I see it. Nice. Excellent. Oh, nice farmer's God. tan. That's, that's that's like watching people race with the uh do you have the the shorts tan? I do, like, yeah. I do. I've been riding my bike mm -hmm. a lot. Um, and we've had really like nice sunny weather. And so um yeah, I just got the got the good old bike tan. Very good. Excellent. Excellent. What did I miss? Well, we were just, we just kind of, um, we made fun of people who uh, are too friendly to bears. Oh, me. Because, because they want to kill the baby bears. Basically we decided. Um, yeah. They're bear is, killers. You know, or, or make the baby bears orphans. So 
Um, so we talked about Trap Rock, and I think that's about, and our own exploits. <laughs> <laughs> How yeah. was Olmstead? That's the good, that's a great question. Look at you, Ellie. I'm ready for Perfect it. Perfect segue. Thank yeah. you. So Fred. So, well, yeah, I did, I'm not going to talk about my Olmstead because it was really bad, but. I'm going to knock you out. The Olmstead race, um, somebody Ellie pelled it. A woman won out, right? Yes. Oh, yeah. ice. <laughs> That's so That's bad. Verb. How did I you know? Have, you if you Ellie Pella race, then you're. Uh, oh my you know. God. I'm embarrassed. Can we like cut the hell? <laughs> <laughs> That's amazing. No, I think it's. I, I knew what he meant. Who was it? Because huh? I write a column for free trial and I'm always looking for like talent that people don't really know about. So you'll have to tell me who it is and I got to have them on my column. Kara Dower? From oh okay India? i know i've yeah. had her already yes okay yeah candy mama herself yeah she she won by i think like 25 minutes over the guy so it so was a pretty solid close she's having quite wow. the quite the year yeah yeah there's this really interesting picture of her from javelina she fell into a cactus Ooh. and so there's just this picture of her with cactus like wrong like not just the spikes like a whole arm of a cactus just like sticking out of her arm oh. and then she's just sitting there all badass like this <laughs> it's so cool yeah she's great is no is that some kind of a violation of uh like environmental rules to pick a cactus up with your shoulder and, and i don't know it could be muling i don't yeah, know might, could, yes, be, could be muling. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. that's our, our cactus uh uh performance enhancers uh -huh. Well, uh, I mean, let's needles. put it to the test. If somebody slaps you with the cactus, are you going to slow down? I don't think so. Yeah. I think you're speeding up. Where I'd be dumb them. enough to slow That's down. Right. <laughs> wow. So, Fred, tell us more about uh, Olmstead. What it? First of all, what is it and where is it? Olmstead. Well, if you've read Fred's book, you would know what Olmstead is. Right. Everybody go buy my Gotta book read and it. read about it. Yeah, mm -hmm. um, Umstead is a hundred miler in Raleigh in a state park, William B. Umstead State Park. It's an eight loop course on like gravel, like uh, roads that are made for like horses. So it's kind of like, okay. like fine fresh stone gravel roads. It's got about a thousand feet of elevation per loop. So it's 8,000 for the whole thing. It's really considered to be a very easy 100. Yeah, that's um, pretty flat. Yeah. I mean, it's got some hills just enough so that you don't feel like you're on a track or anything. But um, this year it was different because there was a bridge out about halfway around the loop. So they couldn't make it a loop. They, it was an out and back. And uh, it was not as much fun as an out and back. It, it left out some of the uh, some of the steeper part in the back part of the course but uh uh what i can tell you about it is the weather was really nice like super dry and about 60 degrees and a little breezy and um one of the things about that when the weather's like that people get dehydrated because they don't even know it and oh, yeah a lot, people, a lot of people got dehydrated and um some people started to lean during the race because oh. uh because they got low on electrolytes you know it's early in the season they're not used to it and uh and so some people got the lean some people uh some people got dehydrated it got really cool when the sun went down a lot of people were really like shivering and cold and stuff um but it, i mean there was no excuse for any of that because it was really a nice day and it was and it's an easy course so everybody should have just had a wonderful time hmm I kind of sucked because my training just wasn't ready to do a hundred miles. So I did 50 and hung out with my friend, Steve, also known as Scobuffs. Um, and, uh, and does we that mean he lives in Colorado. Yes, he does. Yeah. Remember I told you. I hear that. I see that everywhere. And I'm like, what the hell does that mean? You, you don't, I will never utter that. Like, do you not, do you not know what it means? I, I, know, I mean, it, go, it means go Colorado Buffaloes, but like, I think that sounds so it's, stupid. I'm sorry. Well, it's, it's, a, it's short for like, let's go Buffs. Yeah, right? I get it. Uh, yeah. Like, There's only buffs. room it's, for it's one like... Buffalo in my heart, and that's the Bills. So, oh, okay. okay. All right. Well, yeah, I'm from East Coast. Coast. Right. It's like Jeet yet. What? It's like Jeet yet. Same Jeet yet? 
Or you oh, still- oh, I got okay, it. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> you know, or um, like the, like uh, there was a comedian who used to do a thing like you know when you were a kid and you're at like a big party, there's always some drunk guy who goes mirror, mirror, and then he's gonna tell you stuff. Mirror. That's right. Yeah. Oh so my anyway, God. yeah, yeah. No uh, Steve Steve lives in Colorado now. He used to live in the east, but uh he lives in like right near Denver. So oh, okay. Close so a little me. little bit of um trivia there, uh little Steve trivia is that he was the person little who and got... Steve very rarely go in the same sentence. What's that? Big little Steve. and Steve. Oh, you say oh, okay. Steve okay. Trivia. Sure. He's six six and about three hundred pounds. So he he was the first. He got me to listen to my first podcast. Actually, so what was it? Um, so he, I was running uh, the um, the one day at the fair, and he was wearing a DFL uh, DFL racing uh, singlet or DFL ultra running uh, singlet, and it just had a little little tag up and right above his pack. And I kind of saw that um, every time I saw him and um, I went back and then there was this uh, podcast DFL ultra running. And it was just a bunch of guys in um, uh, up in new um, New Hampshire. And they just, they're as slow and as painful as we are. They were even worse. <laughs> they would just go into the details of like, so tell me about mile seven and a half what happened then <laughs> and what was oh my you know and then i had the gatorade but not the blue kind it was the yellow kind and it was bad <laughs> and oh and i just love and and i couldn't stop listening to it you know um so and that was one of the inspirations uh of, of this show certainly so um, my first podcast was this american life oh okay. back before i was a runner okay well oh. good i think oh. mine was my favorite murder so okay. are you into the true crime celeste oh yeah she creates them don't don't so <laughs> yeah uh, i like i i like I murder. Listen to armchair expert like that podcast network and they have a podcast called flightless birds where um a new zealander named david he uh explores a different piece of american culture and i don't n do the true crime like i did serial but that's about it um and he yeah. like did this deep dive into true crime and it did honestly make me want to like listen to some of these or watch them just to know what happens mm. um but also it's like fascinating you think things are fucked up <laughs> oh no it's really fucked up i will say sometimes you'll be like listening to that shit like i would listen to it out like in the woods alone and then like you meet somebody and you're like, yeah, you're kind of a killer, right? Like <laughs> just assume everybody is a sociopath. Like it's kind of fun. Yeah. Gosh. Wow. So Fred, what so was for, your first podcast? Yeah. My first podcast? Yeah. I'm still waiting for it, Ellie. Yeah. <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> Valid. He doesn't smoke his own stash or what? <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah. He just deals. Yeah, he doesn't get high on his That's own right. supply. That's right. Yeah. Um, I actually i I've listened to some of the the you know the NPR shows that that like you can hear on the radio, but also our podcasts. So uh, yeah, that's true. Like yeah. I actually used to listen to radio shows, like yeah, before podcasts were a thing. Uh, there were some good ones. Radio Lab that. was one of them. Uh, and and Wait, the Radio Lab. Tell me. Listen to that. Yes, they don't tell me. Yeah. That's very yeah. funny. I yeah. like um some history ones sometimes. Uh, like the short like history ones where I'll just tell you something. Like the, I like, like Davy Crockett stuff. I listen to his uh, history of ultra okay. or the ultra running. I read his podcast. blog. Oh, do you? Yeah. Yeah. Huh. I I gotta I have to um. I want to talk to him because there's just like so much, like I want to know specifically about like how he conquer the frontier. That's what I want to know. Well, yeah. 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 That's there's that I mean, killed the first bear when he was only three. Whatever. Yeah. yeah. And, yep. I mean, but did he leave the bear, you know, did he leave any orphans? Oh no. yeah. Oh, poor baby bears. Orphan bears. I would like to say for the record that Ellie is sporting a, an excellent, farmer tan i you just lifted your arm up and it's quite tan yeah it's, it is impressive yes yeah it was very accidental so i a couple of weeks ago i strained my groin at work 
And so I've been on off running for a couple of weeks. I just ran today, like, to, so like for three whole minutes. So we're on the up mm. and up. Um, but so I've been doing a lot of biking out here and the biking is good. There are a lot of like road, I just on the road um, or gravel and stuff. And so, uh, but I wear like the same two shirts. And so they're just these like, tank tops but I will never get bike shoes I'll never get bike shorts I'm like that means I've given up <laughs> that means I've surrendered <laughs> there you I go. can't do it <laughs> you're not gonna but yeah. it's been pretty fun so how does one strain a groin in a cafe so I mean, have, this has got to be a good story right yeah, uh, well so we uh give away free scratch on tap like it's on a keg uh -huh. And so we have to make the kegs, which are like 50 to 60 pounds of liquid. Oh, and yeah. so we were doing an event a couple of weeks ago to actually launch a new product, our everyday drink mix. And so um, I was just lugging these kegs around for over like an hour because we were moving them and then filling them and stuff. And by the end of that, I probably didn't have great form. And um, so I definitely tweaked it then. And then the next day, my friend and I were doing a long run and I felt actually fine for the first 15 miles. And it was a seven miles that one back. And then I had to do a couple more to get to 20. And then, so we got to, to, back to the car at 15. I just got more water and then I turned around. And then when I turned around and just started running, that's when like, I felt it come on. Yeah. And so, um, yeah, it was just, Nothing exciting, um, but yeah, and so it was pretty bad for the first like week, but then it really started to heal pretty fast. And and stuff like this is like a three to six week um, healing time. So I'm at about mm -hmm. three and a half weeks right now. So I'm gotcha. very like it's not perfect. Like I definitely could feel like some ache and stuff, but I think that's kind of the natural process of like getting back going again. Um, so I'm hoping that I'm gonna still do like every other day of just walk runs and stuff, but. Um, yeah. Hopefully I'll still, I, I should be back in the good trajectory. It mm. stinks. I don't think I'm going to be able to do quad rock, um, which was going to be my first race this season on May 11th, but silver lining, I think I'll instead do Cayuga trails when I come back East to visit family and friends and I have a wedding to go to. And so I'm like, this is actually good. Okay, good. Because right. Cayuga trails is one of the best races in New York. Awesome. Awesome. So have you done any release with that, like um, with the with the groin or anything or any tree? I mean, I'm sure that like, here's the good <laughs> thing is that you're in Boulder, right? So that you have like, probably like everybody who walks in is like, has a doctorate in like groin repair, or whatever. They're all groinologists. So, uh, yeah, I've seen, <laughs> I saw my PT a lot the first two weeks um, and she's really good. And then I got two sports massages because they also do help, which those yeah. hurt. So like, yeah, I don't know if anyone's ever gotten one, but it's like, especially the guy that I go to, like his arms are bigger than my legs. He's like a mm. lifter and, um, tactical term. And, um, and so he really works on me pretty well. Um, and then it's healing. So I do, and then I get a lot of exercises that I do like every night. Um, and then on this Friday though, I, I think because all of my injuries happen on my left side. And oh, okay. I think it's from 20 years of playing volleyball, like being right-handed, the steps are left, right, left. And then you take mm. off from your left and swing. And so I think I just am very left side. Like I favor that side. And so it's probably actually stronger, but that means it takes more of the load. And so I'm going to see a chiropractor on Friday who actually works with like all the like like Sarah Hall and does yeah, yeah. and Emma Bates um and so <laughs> I'm actually gonna go see him on Friday and just like get an assessment just get more eyes like I trust my PT but just more eyes on it um and then see what he says um but the thing is there are a lot of people are but these people are not cheap like uh, like this, the initial assessment for this guy on Friday is $180. Like, thankfully, huh. all the follow ups are less, but $180, he better fucking fix me. That's all I'm telling you. <laughs> yeah. Like, is there like a guarantee <laughs> on that? Yeah, there should be. Like, I don't know. But yeah, so um, I don't know. I'm doing what I can, but a lot of it is just like rest. Like, whenever I get restless, I'm like, oh, yeah, it's three to six weeks. And we're like, I was like, we're only a week, two and a half. Like, so um, yeah. But, yeah. But they don't so know who they're dealing with either. Right. Right. I mean, I mean, I don't know. Also, food and beverage working in hospitality is it's a lot on your body. It really is. Yeah, so. and It's not like it's not like you can like hide and say, oh, OK, I, I just like I just don't feel like 
<laughs> clearing your plates or like talking to you or bringing anything over or right. talking yeah, to well, the actually employees. Now, or- because I, I keep Aaron, my co-manager keeps reminding me, he's like, you're the boss. Like, remember that? Because like, I will do everything everybody else does and stuff. Like I do all the back end, but like, and so now <laughs> I walked in like one day when I was, I was so mad about this. Like, cause I was in pain and I was pissed yeah. and I was like, listen, peasants, I'm never lifting a keg again. Like, <laughs> yeah, right on. It was just- you tell them. <laughs> not a good moment <laughs> but they they laughed and they were just like no ellie you should you're not gonna lift kegs anymore is, is that gonna hurt your olympic uh aspirations i don't know maybe not that it will that... like i miss boston too like ugh. i know i know so let's yeah. could, fred could um i just bef- i want to talk about boston so we're gonna get hey, there before, but we're gonna before just, we go to um, boston let me just say that Hundo's yes go. Yes. Finished uh, in 25 something at Umstead, and he was paced by none other than La Dog. La Dog. Oh, nice. And uh, Oak was pacing there too. So, so there was, you know, we saw. I Speaking saw... of pacing, guess who I'm going to pace in a couple weeks? Who? And guess where? First, guess where? It's in Arizona. Okay. Um, it's a long race. A long, oh, Cocodona? Yes. Oh, my God. Uh, okay. And, and then this it, person is from Ohio. Eddie? He might be Mennonite. Um, I think you guys have had him on the show. Have you uh, had Arlen on the show? Uh, no, we have not. Oh, you, you got tell- have Arlen on. Yes. Okay, well, I'm going to go like, I. so I was sad. Basically, the story here is I was sad. And so mm-hmm. um, I called Arlen out of the blue. <laughs> and i was like arlo let's just talk for a while he's great and he just like i, I can like not talk to him we cannot talk for like six months and i'll just be like call him he picks up and we talked for like three hours oh nice. and so i was like i'm sad and so we we're just talking for a little while and then he was like would you think about coming out and i was like oh, mine i can i still i just like have this injury and i'm like maybe but then i looked at flights <laughs> and it was only 60 bucks so i was like oh yes, yeah i will come out i don't care if i can run and yeah. so uh, yeah i'm gonna go out and hopefully do the last 18 miles with him of the race so he'll be walking <laughs> then i can walk nice nice very good yeah. then i'll see the real crazies jeez <laughs> the whole yeah. time though i'll be like but if you heard of the cut 112 no oh this is nothing <laughs> have you lived in for <laughs> in, for a limited time only so right you know. um Wow. So that's, that's awesome. You know, okay. That's... One last Umstead thing. Yeah. Leah yeah. Rose finished uh, about an hour ahead of Joe, I believe. So nice. Yes. Yeah. Really? Okay. Yeah. Yeah, Joe came by at one week. You know, we, you pass each other because it's all out and backs now. Mm-hmm. Said, my girlfriend's kicking my ass. <laughs> <laughs> so did she, did she go under 24 or no? I don't. I think she did. I think she was like 24, 15. So she beat him by about an hour, I think. Okay. That's under 20. That's a, that's a 24. Practically a 24. Yeah. yeah it's a rounding error. That's so. for her. <laughs> <laughs> awesome. That's, that's really good. That's. Uh... And, and Mike Smith, the guy whose wife wrote the book that we would like to have on the show. Mm-hmm. He finished his 23rd Umstead. Hmm. Wow. And he went under 24 hours. So good wow. job. Smith. Yeah, very good. That's that's good. Well, Fred, nice uh, nice job for uh, fifty miles. I know it wasn't what you were looking for, but um, it's still you know what. You gotta Fred? be proud of fifty miles. Fifty like, miles, uh, yeah. You know, proud of it. Now, it, I mean, if I had run the whole fifty miles, I would be proud of it. But it really, basically, I just hung out with Steve when we talked. It was a good visit. Okay, hanging out for fifty miles is still an accomplishment. Mm-hmm. Um, there's, like there's a good joke out. there too. I'd like to point out for the record, <laughs> hey, yeah, uh, that uh, Tara Dower finished her hundred before I finished my fifty. So there was that. Okay. All okay. Right. Yeah. Yeah. What's the cutoff for Umstead? Thirty hours. Okay. Very good. I um, have done it a few times, but I just you know. So I just, how many? How many times have you done it now, Fred? I finished Umstead 13 times and Holy did it. Shit. And I did 87 and a half the last time I was there, and I did 50 this time. Mm-hmm. But one of the, you know, on the old course where it was a loop course, I have done uh 111 loops. 
Not 112. I know. Oh. I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Oh. Wow. Okay. Yeah. All if right, I finished that last one in 22, then I would have I would have had 112. Okay, but there's you know, there's time retired. for that. Could have retired. Yeah, there's there's definitely time for that. That left something. You, you left a little bit on the table. You left a reason to go back. So right. <laughs> um, good. Well, congratulations, Fred. And you know that's uh, you know good for you for getting out there. So so I'm like looking at races and just wondering if like I'm gonna I don't know. Like if I'm going to do another really, you know, another hundred miler again, or if I'm even going to attempt one again. So you're already signed up for one. So I, I think I, you're full of shit. I, I know. No, I know I am. But like, so I it went to, harder, I, or, you're, Ellie, you're still I mowed, young. I You've got time. My lawn, I mowed my lawn and uh, my, had it on my Garmin watch and it thought it was a threshold run. Did <laughs> <laughs> it push mow at least? <laughs> It was, well, it was a, it was an electric mower <laughs> and it was, and it, um, so, <laughs> and then I did, um, I didn't win cut. I didn't win the Hoppin Hodges 50 K this year either. So, um, but I did, I did run it, but I cramped up during a five mile run, uh, yesterday. I've bonked on a 10 miler. <sighs> It, but then my watch You're said like a it, mile and a half away from breakfast. And I was like, go on without me. I'm going to die. <laughs> <laughs> I just sat down. I, <sighs> Bring me back food. Oh my God. And then my watch said I needed 40 hours of recovery. So <laughs> <laughs> my I don't think my watch out. said that. Like, you know how on two mile runs, it'll be like 77 hours of recovery. And then I'll bike for five hours and it'll be like, you're fine. Keep going. Yeah. <laughs> Why don't you try to beat this effort? I'm tired now. Try to beat this effort, you know? (laughs) Oh, fuck that watch, right? I mean, come on. We finally get a productive. Yeah, thanks. Yeah. Um, So, uh, Boston Marathon. That was exciting. We had a watch party at Scratch. Did you? So, what's your hot takes on the race? What, what What did you say? Um, so... Edna Kiplagat is so good. Mm-hmm. Like she's been first or second at every marathon major since 2011. Yeah. And she's like 44. Isn't that right? Yeah. Has a kids like, yep. um, Helen, sh- she's doing something out here. Like we see her all the time. Mm-hmm. Um, cause the, the whole, the whole rest of the OAC team, um, that she trains with, like they train at like 10, like a, a professional person. She is like out there when I'm out there, like 637. And I'm mm. like, so conspiracy, either she, I think she hates them. No, I'm kidding. Oh, I like They're this. Nice. But I mean, repeat wins, like only like three other women have done that. Like that's mm. pretty, that's pretty awesome. It really is. It really yeah. is. Yeah. Um, And a unique running style too, right? Yeah. I was just going to say her running style freaks me out a little. Yeah. But yeah, but that's that was exciting to watch. Um, and then uh, how about the uh, um, U.S. Uh, women who ran? Yeah, Emma led for a little while. So from what I see, they were going kind of slow in the beginning. Mm-hmm. Um, and that well, actually be- is like what I thought they went out fast. No. Yeah, no, I think they well maybe they went out a little fast, but then like they slowed down. Yes. Yeah. And um, the like issue with that is like if nobody breaks away then Mm -hmm. nobody's gonna blow up later and Mm. so then people that are faster they'll just like sit for 20 miles and then kick it yes so um i think des actually ran into the beginning a little bit to try to like right on them to break because she knew she wasn't gonna win but also she's like if I make them go too fast and then back off, then like so there, then people will blow up and she'll be able to pick them, pick them off. Yes. Yes. Um, so yeah, she's playing the master's game. Yeah. I um, heard her. I heard her uh, talk about that on her, um, on her show. Like, yeah, on, she yeah. Had a quick um, show where so she kind of got into that. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I, I thought that was, yeah, I thought that was really cool to see um, her. When I saw that result, I was like, Oh shit. She's not just like, cause she could just be mailing it in. Right. I mean, like everybody loves her, like, you know, 
she's already she's already won. Everybody loves her. She's got like a, a great podcast going, and you know that's like, like the, one of the only running podcasts I listen to. I listen to this Ten Junk Miles, and then that one. Oh, okay, <laughs> all right. It. Very good, and yeah, and the and um, I, and then uh, also so let's let's give like the special like the most important thing like that's good luck let's face it is uh the bib number right so whatever bib number you have is going to help so who was 112 guess who was 112 her name has already been mentioned on this show it was des it was sarah hall ah, sarah, hall. Oh, <laughs> sarah okay. hall had bib 112 now she had her name on her bib which i i just kind of bugs me i kind of like numbers on there because i don't know I, All right. What do we think about the size of the bibs? Soon it's going to be bigger than the uniform. I think they're huge. Yeah, those are giant. Yeah. yeah I think like, yeah. I really think you don't need, like, I mean, they barely need bibs at all. We know who they are. Like, yeah. Put like a little timer on their, on their shoe. I, you know, I, I think it's, it is weird. And I'm sure that, you know, the, the bad part is on a day like that, is that it's going to keep you hot. It's going to actually make you hot in a mm -hmm. sense, right? Because you're not, right. you all of a sudden have a, have a, um, a singlet that's not, you know, not venting air. I mean, not that it's like a major thing. I mean, that's why you like to crimple it so that it gets the little dimples in it like a golf ball and will carry further. <laughs> <laughs> So, I, you know, but, I, I, yeah, like I don't know. I mean, much, that's so annoying. Animals. But Fred, you know, I mean, what do we do to our bibs, right? Like old school, old school, what do you do with a bib, right? I don't do any of that stuff. You don't stuff. fuck with the bib? No, I because I put it on my pants. Okay. I, don't, I don't put it on my shirt. Okay, because I only run ultras and I'm probably going to change my shirt during the race. So. Okay. Yeah. That's or take fair. them off, you know, <clears throat> so I put it on my pants, but a lot of people fold theirs up so that it's like the postage stamp. stamp, basically, right? All you can see is the number. Yeah. Now, yeah. do you have any traditions with your bib? Any things that you do to it to customize it for your, uh, for your race or anything like that? Or any, like nothing, nothing special. You just like pin it on. I just pin it on. Fuck. Yeah. You just pin it on, huh? Just like that. Celeste, how about you? No, I have found that um, I used to wear it on my shorts. Lately, I've been doing the belt. Okay. You know what I mean? I need a tri belt? Yeah. So, like, you know, I don't know. It's just like a little clip belt that goes, like, I think technically it's supposed to go around your waist. I always put it under my boobs because um, it's more comfortable. And some of us have had three kids, so we pee our pants on occasion. Um, Allegedly. Yeah. Allegedly. But so I, cause you know, same thing. Like if you're going to change your clothes or something, it's just a lot easier. And you don't have it. Do you have any weird things that you don't, so you don't do anything weird with the bib either? No, I mean, I'm like, like the only one, like what I do you do? LED use it as toilet paper? paper. Like, what are you doing with well, it? <laughs> first of all, Ellie, do you do anything? It's any, like, you're like, okay, it's the bib. This is what I do. I mean, I'll, if it's too, if it's too big, I fold it down. Okay, that's um, good. But I usually do it on my shorts too. Yeah, yeah, it's more comfortable on your shorts. I, yeah, I always use. So I'll fold mine down sometimes. But then the one major thing that I do that has been like a major contributor to my success in running and the racing scene is um, I only use three pins. So I was going to mention this. This is another thing with bibs, like. I finished a race with like one bib, me like holding it on and being like, I'm here. Um, and so, cause like sometimes if I go, but also the only thing with shorts is when I go to the bathroom, like it gets kind of crumpled and then pull it back up. Yep. So yeah, that's, yeah, I pulled mine up and like pulled out pins before so that it was flapping or something. Yeah, that's happened. Yeah. I have a pin stuck. I used to wear the same tank top for my good luck tank top for, um, marathons and there's a pin stuck in it because it got like you know how like sometimes oh, the string or something gets stuck around yeah so i have like a pin hanging off that shirt forever I, every, every single pair of shorts that i have has at least one pin in them um and the holes do you ever get the holes in the shorts from like 
from the pins. The pins. Yeah, yeah. If you don't take it out, it will do that for a while. But I keep a, I purposely keep a pin there just so that a, I always have one, like in case any gear goes, or um, if I need to pop a blister or something like that, I have a rusty pin that I can use. Perfect. <laughs> Rough, rusty safety pin. But yeah, I always have, I um, always have a pin there and I only ever use three because I want to save weight and I never put the pin through the <laughs> hole that's punched in the bib because that's just what they think you're going to do. So I, don't, I won't even give them that satisfaction. So, huh. I just okay, saw this thing. Okay, hold on. So I just asked AI, mm -hmm. better way to pin a race bib on a jersey for a running mm -hmm. race. Number one, the safety pin technique. Don't use the pre-punched holes. These can cause the bib to flap in the wind. Instead, push the pin through the bib and the jersey material itself, creating a small hole. So it keeps the, the bib flatter. All right. Okay. Focus on even placement. Place, place put the two uh, top two pins in vertically, aligning the bib with your shoulders. Then use the bottom pins horizontally to prevent side to side movement. That's actually a good idea. Huh. Um, I love CultureBot is so pins, smart. It says so use more than so use seven to eight pins for security seven. in windy conditions. Oh my God. That's fucked up. That's ridiculous. <laughs> That's like you would be weighted down. Why don't you wear like ankle weights? Okay. Uh, so number two, ditch the pins altogether. Race bib tape. There is double sided tape specifically designed for race bibs. It's lightweight, easy to use and removes cleanly without leaving residue. Hmm. Um, and then I said, give me a better way to keep track of runners during a race. And it said, GPS enabled apps. But beyond smartphone apps, there are ooh, timing chips in the bibs, which I think we have. Lightweight GPS trackers. Okay. Mm -hmm. I think you should just be able to hold on to that. Um, all right. Yep. That's all they got. So I'll have to keep asking better questions. That's that's good stuff though. I think right there, except for yeah. the pin thing. That's I, I, like actually more <clears throat> pins might not be a bad idea. Actually, that sounds kind of punk. All that weight, like having eight. I kind of want to see someone with like yeah. yeah, like thirty pins on their bib, like just <laughs> that. Maybe there's something to it though. Because <laughs> you imagine like coming up iron. with all these pins. If you have an iron deficiency, you might be able to absorb some of that against your skin as you're running. I wondered if like magnets like very small but like powerful magnets would be yeah. better or velcro um there are magnets for race bibs yeah. i didn't like them personally i don't yeah. like them but or like snaps yes i, yes. I saw the yeah. thing on facebook that was advertised to me where it's like a two-piece thing like you snap it through your through your oh. through the hole in the bib and through your shirt and it doesn't I you know, it doesn't pierce the shirt or anything, just snaps. My, my my wife brings me home shirts that have this big thing that's kind of pinned right through it. Um, but every time I go into the store, the alarm goes off. So I don't know what. Maybe you could do something like that, you know? Uh-huh. Yeah, you could change know. the color of that if you just pull it off. Okay. Yeah. 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 I don't know. It's so there's there's those are good ideas. Um I don't know. Yeah. Maybe, maybe there is an advantage to having more pins. I never thought of that. I had always gone to, instead of like, I've been going minimalist pins. Maybe I should be going cush pins, you know, just like, like get the extra, the extra pins there. So, I mean, that's what AI says. So we're all going to be doing it soon. <clears throat> maybe Chrome, uh, maybe Chrome can help prevent uh, cramping too. It can help Chromium? prevent crumping. crumping. Yeah. Yeah. And, and the like distraction, juicing? the distraction of the, uh, or the oscillation of the bib. I mean, that's a major detractor from forward momentum. Oh, the worst <laughs> is like, if you catch it with like your hand. Oh, yes. God, yes. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Oh. I hate that. And if you do it once, you're going to do it like six times. And like, sometimes and you, it, like you catch and like the and, like, bad you, when you're, yeah. when you're mad too. Yeah. Oh yeah. Yeah. And then you sprain your thumb on the open pocket. You ever do that? Like dislocate um, your thumb. <laughs> I haven't gone that far, but I, yeah, get my yeah. thumb on I, I exaggerate maybe a little bit. <laughs> it's, it's and like you well. were saying, where it gets all wrinkled when you have to go to the bathroom, and I'm like the queen peer. Like I pee every five seconds, so like by the end of a race, my bib is just like a ball. Mm. Wow. Like, a couple of my friends have perfected the like they just pull their shorts to the side and pee. 
See, but I wear longer shorts because I got fat. Yeah, I wear spandex, so so that's not happening. Yeah, exactly. And I I would find a way to like pee on my pants. Exactly. Yeah. I I have a friend once at a race who had, she she tried doing that and she peed in her brand new shoe. Oh. Yeah. And then it was, it was the John Kelly, that really hot race in August. Yeah. And so there was like, um, sprinklers everywhere and she's like should i rinse my shoe i'm like yeah it's full of piss of course you should rinse it like what are you doing like, yeah so i don't do that that race is hot it's it's the worst it is it is luckily you got the ocean to swim in after so you can rinse the pee out of your shoe. you can rinse the pee out of your shoes <laughs> at the end didn't we have a decision about like whether when you're if you're like trying to win a race like whether or not you would ever stop to pee or just pee on the go like just pee right through your clothes i stop okay i yeah, pee my like, pants without like a even choice when i was like in a like a, especially like even in like a road marathon like i know a lot of people pee on themselves but i am it's hard to tell if i'm gonna just pee or if something i'm gonna do something else too yeah that's true so i remember like yeah. my quickest porta potty stop was like t- five seconds so i was like it's fine mm. you gotta have a plan open the door pants down get it out pants up get out of there ppr like, yeah yeah <laughs> did it in the buffalo marathon all right that's that's so like for uh, others, i'm like this is too boston. slow i can pee that's like shalane flannigan's you know uh stop at boston in 18 oh, right? right yeah yeah, yeah. it was kind of like that to- or to John, yeah. I think that was was that 18 seconds though, or 11 seconds. Yeah. I yeah, was, yeah. I'm really fast at peeing too, but I, yeah. you, I'm not. You have to. <laughs> I'm like, <laughs> I, I'm like, you take all those things and you put them together. Like I go often and I it takes me forever. <laughs> and then well, also like I'm like when I think like I'm like almost done peeing, I start pulling up my pants already. <laughs> okay get out right. of there you, <laughs> i guess like you spin the tires as you're going that's i mean that's yes the essence of skid marks i guess it's a pit, so. stop. pit stop right you gotta no, go quick okay so i was like about to win but i still had like four miles oh okay so like i was like i'm not going to shit my pants when I won this, win this race. Like I can't yeah. do this to the town of Buffalo. Yep. A Buffalo bill is going to hand me my medal. Okay. Like you can't do that. That's <laughs> yeah. I mean, that's like, that's like a good compromise, I think. Right. That's <laughs> oh, fair. Some well, famous people have done it though, Ellie, you know, like, the, I know, I know. And then but... won, won a marathon, the New York marathon back in the day. True. I might, I could be even more famous in Buffalo right now. If I had done that. You probably would be. Probably. Like, people would have video of it and stuff. Yeah. Like, there's really I was going to say, it's, you'll, yeah. you'll be uh, virtually famous very quickly. <laughs> It'll go viral. Oh no. I, that's my, like, I, that is my like nightmare. <laughs> yeah. To go viral. It, in it is. You know, we situation asked. Situation like that. Yeah. We asked, um, one time we asked a whole bunch of, um, patreons different questions and one of them is what's your biggest fear when you're running and it was like pooping myself was like off the charts it was like there was like you know falling like people were more afraid of pooping themselves than falling i mean it's a legit (laughs) concern yeah right yeah no i'd have to be like like getting injured and being like 10 miles away from anything Mm. Yeah. yeah and pooping yourself Right. <laughs> so, oh, yeah. point, like, I don't care. <laughs> I deserve this. Oh God. <laughs> yeah, that's something. So, um, so who else ran Boston? So, uh, Stefan did a good, had a good run, right? He he requalified. He did awesome. He said it was miserable, very very mm-hmm. hot. Yeah. Um, he had already the race he qualified at actually qualified him for twenty twenty four and twenty twenty five. So he was already qualified. Yeah. But he requalified. Yeah, I think he ran yeah. like a 315 or something. Yeah. I think he went out. Um, yeah. So he that was good. Um, I, I still wanna I wanna talk to him just to like I don't know, like just talk about the the race. Like um because like I, I don't know, I look at it as like such a negative split race, you know. Um, and I saw a lot of people were killing it, but maybe if it's gonna be hot, people are it, it ended up being hot, so a lot of people were slowing down as the day went. Yeah, and we haven't we haven't had any heat yet. 
Oh, so I it's know. not like anybody has any acclimation to it at all. Yeah. Talk to me yesterday, cramping up on a five mile run. So the guy who, who cramped up on a five mile run with all of his friends wants you to need some scratch to everyday it. drink mix. That's what I think <sighs> probably do. If I had scratch everyday drink mix, this never would have happened with scratch everyday drink mix. I think Ellie can personally mix. deliver you a keg of that. Or, I could. Or here. She'll yeah. carry the keg right we, to your car. I think they're going to have scratch at the um, uh, at Lake Waramug. They are. They Ooh. indeed are. So are they? Nice. Yeah, Bill, Bill oh, I gotta... Dell said to me, that's, you know, a week from this weekend. And Bill and Dell said to me, like, yeah, I like, made it sound like I was going to get free scratch because he had some connection to Ellie Pell, but I had to pay for it. So I was like, <laughs> I, I told him to tell to me you. if he ran into any problems and then I would hit Ellie up for the, uh, uh, you know, for the extra push over the line and, and to apply for it. But <laughs> we'll see. Maybe next year, Ellie. Maybe next year we can help. If you, if you come to Scratch Cafe, you can have all the free hydration you want. <sighs> so there's there a water go. stop at Lake Warmug in Boulder, Colorado. <laughs> you just yeah. it's a little out and back to the it's aid station, little... but it's all you can drink. <laughs> you you, you can do it. It's fine. Yeah, it's a special aid station. It is. Well, I'm looking forward to that race. Although I'm doing Ragnar in Virginia. So we're going to finish Ragnar on Saturday and drive home from Virginia. I Ooh. love and then Ragnar. I'm... That was like, oh, it like adults so live in college. It really, it's pure idiocy. And we're doing it. So we're doing it. It's a trail one and we're glamping. But so we have two teams. We have an ultra team and a regular team all in one glamping site. So it's like 12 good friends just like hanging out and being stupid. Which is yeah, it the was majority of my life. Like, I went with like eleven people I didn't know, <laughs> and so I'm like meeting these people. Uh, they're really nice, but also like I was learning about like, <laughs> who was sleeping with who, and like it was all those are the <laughs> Those are so <laughs> great. Fast. Yeah. It's, it's it's the best, especially when it's like one seat in front of you. <laughs> so all right, and you're like, we're all trying to sleep here. Get out of here. <laughs> oh my oh. gosh. So fun though. Oh. Yeah. Yeah. Ragnar's, I do, I do love Ragnar's, but it's gonna be a long drive home. And then I'm volunteer, so I'm the volunteer coordinator for Lake Warmog. So I have to get home, like take a nap and go to Lake Warmog. So, yeah, that'll be, yeah, that'll be cool day. though. So if, if anybody, we're going to have an aid station there. Um, yep. Fred's going to be handing out medals, I assume. Right. I will be. Yeah. Um, yep. But we're, we're going to have an aid station there. So if anybody wants to come and hang out and work that aid station, um, please do Dr. so. Yeah, so Dr. yeah. Um, it will be, it will be a lot of fun. You know, we can actually, um, you know, we can use your help. I think, um, I think Becky's going to be there. I'm going to be there. I think Tony's going to be there. Um, Jimmy? Uh, who's that? Jamie Myler? No, Jimmy. Oh, Jimmy. Jimmy Actually, I spoke Jimmy. to Jimmy last night and he said that he was going, he was going to try to come and hang out some too. So oh, good. Yeah. Sweet. yeah. Great. So, um, you know, there you go. I'll drive it's around nice the lake like 67 like... times, just bringing stuff to all the volunteers. Yeah. That's what you're going to be doing. Okay. Yeah. But, you know, it'd be nice, Art, if you didn't have to be there from like 6 a.m. to 9 p.m. That would be. Yeah, I could use somebody to take the early shift. That would be awesome. That would be <laughs> nice, right? Yeah. So um, we got to work out. I'm going to probably post something on the Facebook page and get, you know, see see who's going to be there and, um, you know, do something like that. But I don't want to kill people with all the details with that. Um, you know what? You know, if someone much. takes that shift. Tell them I'll send them some scratch. Ah, oh, there you go. <gasps> nice. There you go. Whoa. Okay. Oops, I just dropped I will. Write that down. I am. I'm Write putting it down. that in the show notes here. Okay. Um, <laughs> good. That's nice. That's awesome. But I think I need That's to end nice. on that note. I have to go to a dinner tonight. Uh, mm -hmm. That starts in a couple of minutes. And I have to ride my bike there. Okay. Uh, nice. <laughs> Ellie, so nice to uh, to yeah, hang out with you, you tonight. Thank you so much for having me Thanks back. For After last week, I was like, "Art, right, I got to come back on." I know. It's been I know. so long. Yeah. Well, we'll we'll it's make sure it's not long. that long next time. So. Yeah, and if so. anybody is going to Kiuga, 
hopefully I will see you there. Mm -hmm. Um, that's the plan as of now. I will, I should be in town at least, hopefully running it. But if not, I'll just be out running around, doing what it be in Ian's house elf like normal. Okay. Um, but I can't wait. It'll be good. I miss I miss New York. Yeah. Yep. Very good. And I'm sure they miss you too, Ellie. So Oh, no, just kidding. <laughs> like, we got rid of her. Hopefully. Oh, I, I okay. love the story when we had Ian on and, and uh, uh, he said, like, he had well, no you're idea gonna, who you're I was. Fire Ellie, because she was always reading a book. She wasn't paying attention. <laughs> <laughs> oh, no. Yeah. Hey, oh, yeah. <laughs> I, I got to throw this out there, Ellie. Are you, you're not going to the Olympic trials, are you? In, in they already Eugene? passed. You what now? No, not the they marathon trials. Not the marathon trials. Oh, the trials. track. The track. Uh, as of right now, I don't have a plan to go. And I don't think Scratch is going either. Okay. Like that would be my way in. Um, mm -hmm. What time? When is it? Uh, it's going to be the end of um, uh, June. June, no. like June 30th is the finals is like the yeah. last day. Sunday. No, I'm not even, I'm not going to Western <clears throat> States this year either. Like I, I'm oh, taking okay. my 10 days of vacation in New York in the beginning of the month and seeing all the people that I love dearly and miss. And so, oh, uh, yeah, I don't have any, I don't have any, I don't really have any want to travel at that point. Okay. All right. Um, oh, you're going though. Yeah. 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 I'm going to uh, go spend some time. I'm running Cascade Lakes Relay. Then I'm going to hang out in Hood River. Um, yeah, I was a... just there. Um, oh, huh. Well, I just did like, so my team had like a camp sort of well actually we taught a camp um my own teammates and i um and in that area it's so it's you'll love it it's beautiful it's yeah. very east coast like it's like wet and lush and green and yes. it's nice i haven't been i windsurfed there probably 30 years ago or something like that so i yeah. have to that's actually the gorge back. 100k and 50k uh like the race free trail puts on just happened this past weekend um that's actually a part of the dinner that i'm going to like two of my friends won and so we're gonna like we're celebrating them and some people are leave, like going out of town and so like it was like we have to do it today and i was like yeah okay, okay. Um, very good <laughs> yeah so it's yeah so they just uh it's it's so beautiful it's so nice you'll awesome. have a great time the pct is right there so Okay. Yeah. That's, you know what, that's a good, um, I, I will have to make sure I check that out too. So I'm still There's trying to figure like out what I'm salmon on the side of the road. And you're like, what is this? <sighs> of course they do. Right. Oh. Gosh, that's uh Sam. Okay. That's, that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to buy roadside salmon. Yeah. That's now a goal. And tell me how it is. I will. <laughs> yeah. So awesome all right guys well, i gotta go thank you so Ellie. much for having me oh, yeah, I, right. love, I listen to podcasts every week it's so great so oh, very i'll see good. you guys soon <laughs> thanks ellie yeah. see ya good night ellie bye okay she's such a sweetheart i know always a pleasure right yeah. um so what didn't we talk i think uh, Beth Linden finished like how many boston's now she, I, I saw the list 11 i think she said she said wow i heard her say i want to say it's 11 okay so she, her first she year was 2007 but then she skipped some years along the way but yeah but uh sub 230 again yeah 228 or something 28 something yeah amazing yeah, yeah. what's amazing is the slowest other than her first year her first year was like 244 but other than that her by far slowest year was the one she won because of the weather was so yeah bad. It was two thirty? That weather was. All awful. the rest of them were under two thirty, I think. So, mm. she's, that, really, she's put up a, a an amazing, you know, bunch it, of. Them. It is so amazing to see her, uh, you know, to see her, to see her do that, right? To yeah. still be, you know, competing up in the front there, and um, you know, and 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 doing all that. So and, because and, God, and, and driving some strategy too, right? She's like. Yeah, uh, everybody's slowed down. I think I'm going to put in a surge here and like blow up this group of 15 just to see what happens. Yeah, you know? <laughs> it's it's so it's so funny because I think that like after having her on the show and then listening to her podcast as well, which mm -hmm. I do all the time, it's it's cool because you like feel unlike so many runners out there. This is somebody that we feel like we know to a certain degree, you know, from from yeah. listening to her show and from you know and from talking to her. So. Um, it's, it's cool to see that, you know, um, uh, Jeff, so Jeff Grant too, he broke, uh, he broke three hours there. Nice. Um, had a, had a good, you know, really good run. Um, 
let's see. Uh, boy, I think there were some, there were a bunch of other people that ran. Um, uh, oh gosh. Uh, Todd Brown ran another one. So Todd, I forget how many he has. I'm going to guess maybe 27. Uh, John Minervino. Um, yeah. John Minervino ran, has like over 20. Yeah. He's 24. So I think next yeah. year he is like, I think he's like automatically in or something like that. I think it kind of changes a little bit after you get 25. So um, congratulations to him. He's just like a, uh, not an ultra runner, but he just like, he just lives and breathes the marathon. And he's at like every race I ever go to (laughs) every road race I ever go to. He's he's also a really, really, really nice guy. He is. Yeah. Or volunteering, you know? So, yeah. um, you know, so that's, that's really cool. And uh, there's a bunch of other people too, that I apologize that I'm just like spacing out and then um, not coming up with right now. I should have, I, uh, the organized art I was going to have a big list of all the people. Maureen East did it too. Marathon Panda. Yes. Yeah. Yep. Very yep. good. Personally, yeah, my good, good friends, Bill and Selena both finished. So I was proud of them. It was yeah. Bill's first year qualifying. So. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, Patrick, I think Patrick Karen did it right. Did he for a Boston again? Bulldogs? He, okay. he was. I know he was going to run it. I didn't personally go and look at his results. I did see. Um, I saw him post something about him his doing that sub two thirty three years ago. So yes. I didn't know if he had run it this year. I, I, that's true. I, I read that as well. <clears throat> Excuse me. I, I read that as well. So, um, so I don't know. But it's it's interesting. I want to talk about that for a little bit. So we um we kind of made like some really cool connections that all start with the Patreons. Um, and I, and I just want to talk about this for a minute. So if you think about it, like if we had this show and we didn't have any Patreons, like my, we wouldn't really know who our, some of our listeners were cause we probably wouldn't be fucking up their names and, you know, and, um, and, and, yeah, I don't know. We might not quite know who's listening and who's not and stuff. And my wife pr- would probably be upset because like, I'd be like in the hole to do this thing, you know, like in losing money on something that I spend a lot of time on. And not that I'm like, you know, not that we're like making like a ton of money or anything like that, but it's enough that it's just like, at least you don't, you don't feel like a, like a punk, right. <laughs> you know, like, it's just a little bit, of, I don't know. It's like a little, like a little, uh, like a little dollar bill tucked inside the, um, the waistband is that like creepy okay probably a little bit but yeah um, <laughs> well, okay, creepy. B- bad analogy but yeah seriously though we get the we get that support which is great and that allows us to keep to do this um through this we end up talking to a lot of different people talk to patrick karen i asked patrick i said hey patrick who do you know <clears throat> who else should we be talking to and he gave me a list of four names um and out of two of them one was Jason from um, Anchor Down Ultra, right? Yeah. Um, and then um, uh, the other was um, Jim from uh, uh, Jim Kane from uh, Jim Kane from uh, Boston Bulldogs, right? Yeah, and he was great. It was really great. He, he was, was phenomenal. Yes. Yeah. He, he I, was phenomenal. I enjoyed talking to Jake. They were both good. They were both yeah. really good. And and yeah. then. Um, and then if you take that a little bit further, so then Jason turns around and he, um, he reaches out to his friend uh, Tovar over at uh, Hoka and Tovar approaches us and says, listen, we want to, you know, I, I just, we, you know, we want to thank you for what you're doing, you know, for your podcast and stuff like that. And we, you know, we want to support you guys some, you know, not, not sponsorship or anything like that, but just, you know, what, hey, why don't you have a pair of shoes? So I was all set to do that and I'm all happy about that and stuff, but ended up taking um, a pair of shoes that he was going to donate. And I went to sound runner, uh, our local store, and I bought the pair of shoes that he recommended. So I, I bought them myself and that's what I ran in, you know, nice pair of carbon uh, text tectonic tech. Yeah tectonic x2 or tectonic 2x sorry i fucked up the name but um ran in those shoes okay then i at the end when we had tovar on and i don't think it was on the air i asked him i said hey listen you know what it would be really nice 
could I make an introduction? I don't know if you guys support other organizations and things like that, but I made the introduction and I inter- introduced Tovar to uh, Jim Kane over or Jim Kane over at uh, Boston Bulldogs, and um, and he said, "Yeah, I'll go see if I can help them out." So I told Tovar to take the pair of shoes that he was going to buy me, and to please give that to the people over at the Boston Bulldogs on behalf of, uh, on the behalf of our podcast. Um, and he was going to help them out anyway, but bottom line is that he showed up and he, um, you know, gave out a whole bunch of shoes to oh, these people phenomenal. in early recovery. And um, it's just really cool to think that like you bounce that ball so many different ways from the Patreons to us. Here we are five years later, we're talking to Patrick, we're talking to the people that Patrick told us about, and then we're taking those two and putting them together. And not only did Tovar go and just like support them with some product and things like that, but he went out and he ran with them and got to know them some. So now there's a relationship between um, Tovar and between Jim and, and between awesome. the people in recovery. And, you know, that all started with the Patreons basically, you know, and, um, and it's just cool because sometimes, you know, sometimes I'm like, fuck, I like my uh, mowing the lawn is now become a, <laughs> a stressful activity that, tempo run. that, I'm, that I'm pushing tempo it, run. I'm stressing myself. Yep. It's a tempo run. You know, anytime I'm mowing the lawn. You need four days recovery. Yeah. Yeah. 40 hours of recovery and, or no, not even that. I mean, I don't even know what the, the <laughs> lawn mowing was. That was, who knows? Um, but then, <clears throat> so sometimes I'm like, okay, what the fuck are we even, you know, what are we doing here? Like, and, and then that shit happens and it's just, it's really cool. So it's cool yeah. to think that Patrick was nice enough to give us those names and that there's people out there doing cool things with running and we were able to connect them with some other people. And um, I don't know. And, and, you know, and a lot of it's because of our, our, you know, the support that we get on a weekly basis. So um, just wanted to let you guys know that that's, um, that's some of the things that you've done as Patreons and impact that you've made um, in people's lives that you might not be aware of. So um you know, the multiplier effect, you know, it just keeps, it keeps going. And who knows now also, I, I also didn't mention this. Then when I went to buy the shoes from Sound Runner, um, uh, Ashley over there, and hopefully I'm not getting her in trouble with her boss or anything like that, but um, she heard that this, that we were doing this thing with um, the charity. So then she gave me a discount on the shoes that I was buying. So I wasn't buying carbon shoes that were going to like, absolutely like because they're pretty damn it they're they're nice shoes but yeah, you didn't expensive. have to mortgage your house yeah, yeah yeah so it was it was nice so um you know ashley over there did um you know you know and i already i already love the store so it's it's um you know but it was nice to have uh, that gesture which i i didn't even ask for and and she volunteered that so that was That's uh phenomenal. that was that was good on on her part so um so I, I wanted to let you, you know, tell, I, I don't think I had had a chance to tell you guys about the whole story here. So um, that's some of the impact that, um, that that's been going on here. So too. So um, I don't small know. things make uh, big results. Like they many do. small things make big results. They do. Yeah. The butterfly yeah. effect, right? Yes. Yeah. 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 That's why I got the tattoo. Yeah. I was going to say, unless you're afraid of butterflies. Then. And yeah jackie and and uh yeah and i think maybe i don't know we have any closing arguments or are we gonna end on that oh not even in the mood to argue right now so there you go i think that's a that's a good place to end it is yeah oh i I, I, i'm sorry i gotta spoil it now um not spoil it but (laughs) the cut 112 right like last chance to sign up for that there's still room for that and there's also there's six spots left in the cut um, I really haven't been, I've talked about it some on the podcast, um, but, um, you know, there's plenty of, you know, there's room in the 50 milers. So it's a nice course that you can just take your time, you know, and do. So, yeah. That 50 miler is fun. Yeah. yeah. Except yeah, for Tri Mountain. Fuck Tri Mountain. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> um, um, uh, 
on the weekend of May 11th, I think my uh, my documentary is going to be shown at Westland. Oh, yes. Yeah. Fuck. Yeah, she, she messaged 11th. me the other day. I'm, I'm so sure excited. Did, right? Yeah, because uh, because yeah, she, Celeste is in it. Yeah. yeah. That's cool. I'm excited. I, we're going to go watch it. Yeah, me I, too. I think it sounds, sounds cool. I, I was I think, to do an ultra yeah, that weekend, but I'm canceling. I'm going to, you know, I'm going to kind of go to your premiere. Yeah, exactly. You gotta go to the yeah. carpet and shit. Wear your bathrobe. Be like, <laughs> you gotta wear your bathrobe, Famous. right? Can we wear our bathrobes to the premiere? <laughs> oh boy, I I think I would. At, like, if if I find out where it is, like if somebody fucks up and tells me, <laughs> like when when and where exactly <laughs> this is happening, I'm wearing my bathrobe. It's done. I'm not. Surprised. I could just picture like, you know, like these big guys like blocking the way in and be like, no, Art, you can't Does come in. Mark. Doesn't Sorry. everybody wear bathrobes into the movie theater? <laughs> I mean, oh. which movie theater are yeah. you going to? I mean, I, the movie I, that's a tradition with me. I don't know. That's how I always <laughs> did it. Right? So, oh man, oh good stuff. Well, that was fun. It was good to um, catch up with everybody, and um, I don't know. I guess to all of our listeners out there, if you made it this far. Of course, seek professional help, and we'll see you all in a mile. Mile Mile and a half. All right. Hey, monkey, not during the film. Is that the one that says? Sounds like you're torturing that monkey. Fucking monkeys! Oh my god! Stop it! Okay, so, um, where is the magic eight ball? Oh, here it is. The magic eight ball. So we need to ask it a question now. Oh. Um, Will there be rain at the Cut One Twelve this year? Will there be rain? Okay, here's one. How about, will there be rain at the Cut 112 this year? Ask again later. Uh Oh, yeah. Uh, yeah, That's that's smart. Like, because you can't trust the weather report out this far. It doesn't fucking know. Like, um, (laughs) You can't trust the weather report for tomorrow. That's probably true. Well, you can if you ask the Magic 8 Ball. Well, yeah, if the Magic 8 Ball answers. Is it going to rain tomorrow? Right. Right, let's see. Um. Uh, better not tell you now. <laughs> oh shit! Because it's just—it's trying to protect you. It knows it's gonna. It rain. does. It doesn't yeah. want to show off. Okay? It's gonna yeah. rain tomorrow, right? Because I'm yep. supposed to meet Fuck yeah. Ashley early in the morning. Yeah. I does anybody go to Guilford? I keep hearing. I went last weekend. I gotta just find out if that if the finish line of the cut is really flooded out, or if Brian was just fucking with me. <laughs> <laughs> that video looked pretty it looked pretty convincing right yeah yeah that looked like it but it could also like brian might have said boy this looks just like the cut except it's not it could so, be i bet it is oh it is gonna be raining yeah, yeah. it's supposed to rain significantly oh yeah. i'm gonna be splashing in mud tomorrow morning okay okay I'll be all fun. right all right um so Fuck. Oh my fucking.